Good evening, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 6, 2020, recorded around 8.26 p.m. Eastern Time. Right now, across the tropics, we do have a lot to discuss this evening. First of all, we do have an area of disturbed weather right now in the southwestern Caribbean, only given about a 0% chance Due to very unfavorable conditions as this heads off towards the west here generally over the next couple of days. Again, a big upper level low situated right now over Florida bringing a heavy rainfall to portions of South Florida in the peninsula with over 2 to 3 inches of rain already reported in some places today with more yet to come. But this upper level low is causing some vertical wind shear and that is going to be generally out of the southwesterly direction. Again, you get a storm moving off towards the northwest with southwesterly shear that is going to kind of rip apart much in the way of any significant organization. We also have an area of disturbed weather right now approaching uh, Bermuda and obviously then in towards the uh, kind of the central and southwestern Atlantic again. This will be moving in the general direction of the Carolinas over the next couple of days. Now, we're not really expecting any significant development, but this does have a 30% chance to go on to be something. And again, it would not be completely shocking if this develops a well-developed uh, low-level center that it would move and impact portions of the Carolinas. But regardless, heavy rainfall can be expected for portions of the Carolinas over the next few days. Again, we're still trying to work out kind of the very specific details, but generally heavy rainfall and gusty winds uh, kind of the main threat with any tropical disturbance, even if it's not a depression or storm or whatever. So that will be something that we're going to have to watch very carefully. Now, as we turn our attention back out to the East Atlantic Basin, we have three systems that we are watching now. Uh, soon to be Tropical Depression 17, where advisories will likely begin either at 11 o'clock this evening or at around 5 a.m. or 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, the same can be said for what is probably soon to be either Tropical Depression 18 or potential Tropical Cyclone 18. And this could require tropical storm watches or warnings for portions of the Cabo Verde Islands uh, by early tomorrow, tonight, or tomorrow morning. Again, this will be moving in the dire general direction of the Cabo Verde Islands. This will bring tropical storm conditions potentially for portions of the islands. Again, this basically has a 90-90 shot, and 92L is at a 100% chance of developing. And we also have a third tropical wave now that is expected to move off of Africa. This too will likely have some chance to develop. This one we will have to watch pretty carefully. This one is at a slightly lower latitude than these other storms. Again, a lower latitude system is more likely to head more west. So this is something that we're going to have to watch pretty carefully over the next several days. Now, if we take a brief look here at Invest Area 92L, again, you can see that it's still disorganized right now. And there is deep convection kind of sprouting off towards the north. This is basically during the diurnal maximum, which is the period of maximum relative convection and in available instability in the atmosphere. So we're kind of seeing that right now uh, with all of this deep convection that is trying to develop here with 92L. Again, this will likely be a tropical depression by tonight or early tomorrow morning as this heads generally off towards the west. You notice a pretty well-developed low-level center of circulation. It's probably closed at this point, and we are probably pretty close to having this be a tropical depression. You can see some outflow, but there's also a lot of dry air and relative shear across the environment right now. And again, much of the same for Invest Area 93L. Again, it's pretty uh, disorganized, but it's also pretty well organized at the same time. We lack a lot of the convective elements right around the center of circulation, which is in through here, but we do have a pretty good area of attempted banding uh, that is kind of forming up here. We also have some showers and thunderstorms over Africa right now to kind of form this northern uh, kind of semicircle basically of action. We also have a southern kind of axis in through here. So we do have enough 
at this will probably be getting a tropical depression uh basically labeled as a tropical depression excuse me by tomorrow morning or afternoon but more than likely probably tomorrow morning sometime we will likely see this be a tropical depression or potential tropical cyclone now quick here for 92l again this is the track guidance updated as of 18 zulu time or 2 p.m this afternoon notice again most of the models at least in the short term have a west southwest dip and then generally carrying us off towards the north and west here over the next couple of days again exactly how far north it gets in the short term is going to mean a lot going forward now the h wharf it is interestingly enough is on the very southern edge very far west here and does not gain a whole lot of latitude brings it much closer to the lesser antilles so this is something that we're going to have to watch pretty carefully uh, for exactly who does get impacted and for 93l most of the model guidance this afternoon is generally west northwest and then generally off towards the northwest and then on out to sea so this one will probably turn out to sea but you never say never with it and a couple of the reasons for the overall kind of guidance right now uh, in a general sense is what we're seeing right now this is a, a graphic i made and, and this is early this week so this is kind of touching on today basically today and tomorrow we're going to have this big ridge of high pressure kind of sitting off towards the north of our storm right now it's kind of the outline of the high pressure we have a trough digging in over the central and midwest united states that's going to bring snow uh believe it or not to portions of denver colorado over the next day or so and then we have invest area 92l and again right now a lot is going to kind of depend on the overall motion over the next uh, day or so but again generally this should continue on a more westerly track at least for the next 24 to 36 hours or so but as we head into later this week we can see that the pattern starts to change and break down a little bit we have the the trough has now kind of slid from the cell the central united states all the way now to the eastern united states and that's kind of the outline of the trough right here the centralized trough axis is in through here so we have the general position of the trough that is kind of diving in through here and that is now helping to erode and shove our high pressure ridge off towards the east so we have the high pressure moving east and we have another ridge of high pressure building back over the uh, central and uh, western united states so in the meantime we have a big kind of area of just general uh weakness in this ridge over the uh basically north atlantic basin right here this is kind of our weakness in the ridge and that weakness is probably going to allow these storms both 92 and 93 l to start to turn on out to sea which these are kind of highlighted in the orange tracks here that's kind of the mean track guidance here however there is some uncertainty still and again i did note here and this is by later in the week a weaker invest 92l would start to go a little bit more west the reason why is because the trade winds at the surface at about 850 millibars is actually out of the due westernly position we don't have easternly trades that are kind of rolling through here that's why both our systems are kind of moving pretty slow right now so with that being said the weaker the storm is it's going to start to feel a little bit more of that trade wind but also it's going to try to feel a little bit more of the low level flow in the atmosphere which is still out of the westernly direction this would help to push 92l a little bit further off towards the west before finally gaining some latitude as models like the h wharf showed conversely there is also the chance that 92l would be stronger and a stronger storm is going to tend to feel the upper level flow in the atmosphere a little bit more and that black line denotes the far in extreme eastern solution that is plausible at the moment so really you have kind of the semicircle of potential area where this storm could be 
in another couple of days. Again, this is very kind of determinate, but it could be anywhere within that kind of general area in through here. It could be anywhere within here. And again, it's going to be very important to kind of monitor the, um, you know, evolution of this. So again, that's kind of where things could be at this point in time. And the same could be very said with 93L. But again, once we start getting 93L to kind of eject off of the Cabo Verde Islands and move off into the northerly direction, there's going to be also a couple of things here. This trough is now going to be kind of skirting on out of here off towards the north and east, and that might allow this secondary ridge behind it to kind of kick this trough a little bit faster this ridge might be able to kind of build back in and link up with this ridge that ridge and amplifies kind of scoots west where we get an amplifying ridge in the north atlantic basin that steers our storms further west right now that's not necessarily so much of a deep concern but that is always a possibility and the h wharf here for or the h not the h wharf the euro the ecmwf uh model this is the a50 vorticity the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground and again for, just for quick reference your uh, higher cyclonic spin is denoted here in the darker red colors uh in the model field again you can see here on the euro our storm actually does get pretty far west before starting to kind of make that turn this is roughly uh, a couple hundred miles to the northeast of the Lesser Antilles at this time. Now, this would start to begin to move off towards the west and then or off towards the northwest and then eventually northeast. And we also have a secondary storm kind of behind that, which the National Hurricane Center has now denoted with a 20% chance over the next five days. So this is something that we're going to have to watch pretty carefully. Again, I will be on top of it. But there is the potential that we might start to get a blocking pattern to once again amplify across the North Atlantic after these first two systems move out probably into the North Atlantic and only cause a harm for marine interest. But again, it is going to be very crucial that we're going to have to monitor things pretty carefully. All right. With that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening and overnight hours. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again early tomorrow morning. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great night. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow morning.